That last song just changed the whole opening. It is settled as the title. What is settled? God is love. <laughs> you want to walk in power and authority that God has given every believer on this planet, the more of His love that's in you, the more power of Him you're going to have. It says in Peter, He's going to, he's going to endue you with His power and His divine nature. What is God's divine nature? Love. So the more you walk in the divine love of God, the more you allow God to heal your heart so you love Him above all else. If you have something in your life right now that you love more than you love Jesus, it needs to go. Oh. Amen. Yeah. Amen is right. I love Jesus more than I love my wife. And I would gladly lay my life down and die for her. I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't even have to think about it. I know how blessed I am. But I love Him more. Because without Him, she's not in my life. So who do you have in your life? If you want to love them properly, you will love Jesus above them. You will have an intimacy and a love affair with the Savior of humanity, the one that purchased your soul and your eternal redemption. You will love Him so much more than anything else because He's a pearl of great price. Because you can't buy that. You can't earn that. And we surely don't deserve it. But He loves us just because He made us in His image and likeness. He's madly in love with us. He cherishes us. He adores us. We're highly esteemed in heaven. But you don't see that way because your love is going in different directions instead of to Him. I can never love my wife properly unless I loved Him first. I can never have a godly wife unless He changed my heart to appreciate what it is to be with a godly woman. Not quite a God. It's Him first, not your spouse, not your children, not your job, not your home, not your money. It has nothing to do with any of that. None of that will bring you peace unless it's the love of Jesus you live through. And that is what you desire the most, to have God's love in the center of your existence. That's when you have more of that, you will have more power. So that must be settled first. When I say it is settled, the Word of God must be settled in where? Your heart. There, not your head. We renew our mind, but what you renew your mind with is what's going to be in your heart. See, if this isn't what you renew, if you don't read this every day, your mind and your heart's going to be in love with the world and the things of the world. The, the longer you stay out of the book, the farther you're going to walk from Jesus' His presence and His holiness and His righteousness. This is your blueprint for life here. There is no other self-help book. There's no programs. Jesus doesn't have programs. He is the program. Amen. He is. He's our program. Amen? Amen. What must be settled in your heart? In John 8, 31 and 32, you know this scripture. You've read it a million times. But I pray that this word today penetrates your hearts, fill it with the fullness of God inside of your heart, and remove everything in your heart that is not Christ-centered. Because that's the only place you're going to have peace on this earth. Then Jesus said, to those Jews who believed Him, if you abide in My Word, you are My disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Romans 8, 2, you're free from the law of sin and death. What was that other one I wrote down this morning? Galatians 5, 1. You're free from the yoke of bondage. You're no longer under a set of rules and laws, but you're under grace and deeds in Jesus Christ. God doesn't give you a whole list of to-dos. What did He tell Peter in the end of the book of John? Come follow Me. Don't look at them. Don't follow them. Follow me. You're, to be a disciple of Christ, you follow Jesus, His ways, His teachings. To do that is to have His Word centered and settled in your heart. See, is that everybody in here is born again. I don't see any non-believers in here. I don't see any demons flying around. They're not welcome in this house in Jesus' name. This is God's house. He rules and reigns. Amen. Amen? Amen. That word settle is so important in this teaching today. To put in order, to arrange, to adjust, to settle one's affairs. To establish as a resident or residence. He settled his family in America when you go to settle somewhere. When you read the Word, God says, you're His temple. You're the home that He comes to dwell within. Have you settled the fact that God's come to dwell within you? Because you're no longer your own. 
You are a building. Not this four walls. You're the building of God. He has, you have to have it settled in your heart that He rules and reigns in you from the inside out. Forget the outside in. See, you're never, most Christians never have peace. You know why? Because God comes to take up residence inside of you. And He needs to kick the stuff out that He didn't put in there, you did. Amen. Okay? Just, just checking. Because all of us do it. We put stuff inside of us that doesn't belong there. If anything comes to you, a person, a situation, a circumstance that steals your peace from Christ inside of you, if you feel a grinding in the Holy Ghost, you stop it right then and there. You just, well, nope. You didn't come from God. Because God never steals your peace. He brings you peace because He is peace. Hallelujah. So don't you dare let anything settle in on you or in you that God didn't bring you. Remember, son, your hearts are deceitfully wicked without the leading of the Holy Spirit. I learned that as a young Christian way back when. My heart was leading me to all these so-called godly things. It's the devil himself. <laughs> I didn't know any better. I was doing this. I was helping this. I was going here, going there. He said, did my spirit lead you or did your heart lead you? See, because when your heart's leading you and not His Spirit, it may look like God, smell like God, taste like God. You may be doing something godly. But if His Spirit didn't lead your heart, your heart did because you were trying to get something. You wanted to go to God and say, look what I've done. No, no, no. He's done. You have not. He can only do through you if His Spirit leads your heart, not your heart leading the Spirit. He can't order your steps unless His Spirit leads you, but that must mean you must deny yourself and pick up your cross, which is your calling, and follow Him and not the ways of man. Amen? Amen. To make a stable or permanent to establish. Oh. To pay a bill or a debt. Your sin debt's been paid in full. Stop trying to pay for it. You know how you try and pay for your sin debt? You try and go out and get all busy and do works. You've been set free from the works of the law. You're justified by your faith in Jesus Christ. You're redeemed by your faith in Jesus Christ. You're forgiven by your faith in Jesus Christ. You are set free by your faith in Jesus Christ. You are washed and holy Amen. as a pure driven snow because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's nothing you can ever do. Everything's paid for in full in your life. Everything is paid for in full. Susan, you're going to have that restaurant, by the way. Um, Amen. Um, told you we're a little different here. <laughs> that thing settling the word in your heart is the spirit of truth. The word is truth. The word is spirit. The word is alive. Amen. Amen. In Colossians 3, go back and read that sometime, 15 to 16. Let the peace of God rule and reign in where? Your heart. See, you've got to settle the fact that it's His voice alone that you want to hear. Stop listening to your head. Your mind will lead you to so-called godly things and godly works and stuff. But if it came from your head, it didn't come from God. God lives where? In your heart. He's not worried. He'll fix this. You have the mind of Christ. And if your thoughts aren't lined up and you don't have peace in your mind, that's because they're your thoughts and your will and not His. Like I said, He's the Prince of Peace. When it make your prayers and supplications with thanksgiving be made known unto God, so that the peace of God will guard your hearts and minds. When you're praying by the Spirit of God, that's God's will. And that's when you see the manifestation of your prayers. Stop praying what you want. Stop praying that you be used by God. Amen? Mm. We've got to know when this whole thing about the Word got so. If you have the Bibles, turn to Psalm 119. 89 to 91. See, I've always said, if you go back and study Psalm 139, you'll see before the world was, before he said in the beginning, God was long busy already making everything. He already drew, you know when you build a house or building? You go to an architect. And they make a whole big blueprint. And they design this massive building. And what they're going to build, the dimensions, how much supplies, how much lumber, how much wiring, how much everything you need, Right? Well, there's one architect of your life, there's one builder of your life that says in Hebrews, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. So, getting things in order you must, but you can't build without the blueprint. Your names were written in heaven before the world began, what God was going to do with you. He wrote the book of life about you before the world began. 
Stop trying to make your own life and start surrendering to the life that He has for you. That's where the peace is. Look what God says to us in Psalm 119. 89 to 91. Forever, O Lord, Your Word is settled in heaven. Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. They continue this day according to Your ordinances for all Your servants. Even nature is His servant. Even nature. But is God's Word... Because the Word was in the beginning, the Word was with God, and the Word became flesh. Amen? Amen? Because it was settled in heaven before He said in the beginning. Think about the power that you belong to. Think about the power of the Word that's in you today. Like John said before, we've been endued with power. We're going to get to that in a minute. Excuse me. Guess what, though? If you get a picture of the Word was alive and living and active before He said in the beginning, it is then alone that you're going to see who you are. You're too busy looking for acceptance from people instead of from God. And seeing that you're His beloved children, He'll never reject you. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. It says, you are my beloved in Jesus Christ. See, when you received Jesus, you became a beloved child in the kingdom of God. People say, well, Jesus was the beloved. Are you one with God or not? Are you born again or not? You're beloved. God can't help but love you because that's who He is. If he could stop loving you, he'd have to stop being God. Do you know that? Satan would be allowed to rise up from his pit of fire where he's going to spend eternity because he, he has no choice. You have a choice to be loved by God. But your big problem is that all of us, we all go through this, what do I got to do? Stop trying to do. Stop receiving. I had to fly 3,000 miles to learn how to receive. Brett's back to smiling. New shoes, new shirts, new ties. But you, I had to learn how to receive instead of just giving. Okay? Because pride kept me from receiving God's goodness for me. I'm so good at going out and praying, laying hands on people, encouraging people. But when it comes to myself, I'm okay. No, I wasn't okay. And there's days you're not okay. That's why you need each other. Stop thinking you can be an island unto yourself and walk this earth. We need one another. The church has to go back to realizing how important we are to have our hearts knit together in love. More love, more power, more unity, more glory is going to manifest itself. Amen. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, we're warming up today. Hmm, thank you. Usually makes it later on in the service, but not today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. New shirts, new everything. Okay, thank you, Jesus. All right now. If you got your Bibles, turn to 1 Peter. We have to talk about everything being settled in your heart. We have to remember something. We can't figure God out. He says, my ways and my thoughts are higher than the heavens are above yours. Do you realize when you stop trying to figure out God, that we have to teach you something? I remember when I was a young Christian, I couldn't read enough of the Bible. Praying every day. Being a witness for Jesus. But coming from the streets, you're a con man. That's all you are. You're a con man. You're a liar. You're a coward. That's it. <laughs> so I was trying to figure all this stuff out. I was getting overwhelmed. I was burning myself out reading the Word. Finally, one day, he just fell on me. He said, hey. I mean, he screamed in my heart, when you stop trying to figure me out, I'll be able to teach you some stuff. Oh, man. Oh. Oh, you talk about, I was looking for a place to hide, but you can't hide from God, the Bible says. You can go to the top of the heavens, you can go to the bottom of the seas, you can go to heaven, you can go to hell. You can't hide from the Spirit of the Lord. Okay? So when we stop trying to figure out Him, He'll reveal Himself to us and what He wants to do with us. Stop leaning on your own understanding. Couldn't be a better Bible verse. I'm sorry, we're not the smartest pumpkins in the patch. The smartest thing you did was you received God's grace to say, I have faith in you as my Lord and Savior. That's the smartest thing you can do. Amen? We're eternally redeemed. Amen? Amen. But you've got to settle the Word in your heart. That's where it comes alive. Amen. 1 Peter 1, 22-25 Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. That's judging no one. We're not here to judge. That's not our job. If somebody's in sin, you can help them with their sin. You can judge sin. You can never judge a sinner. 
And don't think you can, because in here you can't show me when you can. Because you can't. How are the sinners going to come to grace if we're judging them? Say, listen, God doesn't accept this. He forgives us and He can make you right with Him. But we're not here to judge any one sin because there's not one worse than another. We're not going to sit and go, well, you're doing this, but you're doing that. See what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you, can't see, you can't be pointing fingers because the mirror is going to come up and you're going to be looking yourself right in the face. Amen? Amen. Amen. I checked this morning. He's still perfect and we're not. Amen. Amen. Mm, Amen. Just saying. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible. You have an incorruptible, holy, righteous seed. What is the seed? The living Word of God that's in you. It's pure. It's holy. This is what purifies you from the inside out. Nothing else has the power to do that. Amen? Amen. Through the Word of God which lives and what? Abides forever. It's settled. Because all flesh is as grass and all the glory of, the, of man is as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, the flower fell, falls away, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. Isaiah 40, it stands forever. It endures forever. It abides forever. It's holy. It's pure. It's eternal. That's what's in you. Every one of you is going to live forever. You're going to live forever. Have eternal thinking. It says put your mind on those things that are not temporal but eternal. Once you start having eternal thinking, you won't be so looking in the mirror making sure you look just right every day. You're going to accept who God made you to be. There isn't any of you that isn't made in God's image and likeness. All of us are. Everybody's uniquely and fearfully and wonderfully and marvelous are His works made by God Himself. You're His handiwork, but if you don't see yourself as that pure vessel, first of all, it means you haven't forgiven yourself of something. See, because if you're holding something against yourself today, if you have unforgiveness towards yourself, you become God. He forgave you the day you asked for forgiveness. Amen. And He doesn't keep a record of any wrongs. Amen. He can't because He's too holy, He's too pure, He's incorruptible. You have an incorruptible God living inside of you. Don't you dare look back. Your past is too heavy to carry. You're not made for it. You're made to be set free from the laws of bondage and yokes that the Lord puts on you in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, mm. Lord. And then we'll bring you this. Thank you, Jesus. But look at how many things the Word is, though. It's established forever. But is it established in your heart? Is the Word of God really settled in here? That, see, because if you got stuff in here, this is the only organ God works with. The physical stuff, come up here, we'll heal you. God will heal you and you'll be all good better. John, the other day, God told him to do something. As soon as he did it, God healed his back. Just saying. <laughs> God said, here, John, do this, because he's been fighting his back pain for a long time. God said, here, go do this. He said, okay, as soon as he went to go do it, he was already healed. Obedience is everything to God. It's everything to God. When you are obedient to God, yes. when you are obedient to the path He's called you to, don't ever let anybody else come and say, well, you need to be doing. No, you know what you tell them? I need to be following Jesus. I'm a disciple of His, not of man. You walk in the ways of God. It doesn't say walk in the ways of man. You've been delivered from that nonsense. Jesus came to destroy religion. He destroyed it. Because religion puts works on your back that God never will. We're supposed to be free. It says He broke the bondage. He broke the yoke. You're supposed to be flowing in the Spirit, not swimming upstream. Stop looking to climb a mountain when there are no mountains in your way when you're obedient to God. Hallelujah. If Moses raised a staff and the Red Sea parted, how much is He going to do for you that are bought with His blood and sealed Amen. with the Spirit? How much more is God going to do for you today? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Let him look at the Wow. Whatever that restaurant is, you're opening, Susan, there's going to be all kinds of plants and stuff on one wall. I just saw the shelves. It's already done. You call forth those things that are not as though they are. Because it's already made in heaven. You're just calling down the finished product. That's all we're doing. It's already done. He put that in your heart because God gave that to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to John, the 20th chapter. Settle it in your heart today. Because once the basic principles of the gospel are settled in your heart, nothing else will
will matter from that point on. Then God will put your priorities in order. You got your priorities, God has His. Oh. We don't like that, do we? I got an appointment book in my briefcase down there. But I don't put anything in there until He tells me to. <laughs> I've learned that doesn't work with Him. <laughs> when you walk with God, everything you have planned is subject to change. Just, just saying... I'm a witness to this one, okay? I love to be organized. I love to have everything all laid out. I'm going to get up at such and such a time. I'm going to do this first, this second. Those things are good. But <laughs> if you put a, if you think you didn't if you didn't ask God first, why do you say why do you think he says in Proverbs, commit your works to the Lord? That means when you get out of bed, you're committing your day to him. Then your thoughts will be established. You know how you have peace in your mind? Commit every day to Him. You know why? Because it's settled in heaven. God can't break His word. God says, if you commit your works to me, your thoughts will be established. That word established, that's that settling in me. You have the mind of Christ. I checked this morning. You got the same Holy Spirit I got. You have the same God living in you that I got in me. Where is your biggest battle in life? Not in your heart, in your head. I should be. I want to. I can. And no, I can't. And maybe I should. And I don't know. God is not the author of confusion, but of love, power, and a sound mind. When you have a problem with your thinking, say, Lord, I thank you. I have love, power, and a sound mind. It's in me. It's living. It's alive. It's well. It is settled in my heart. And if your heart is settled, your soul is settled. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb, and the stone is rolled away, and she freaks out. She goes running and gets Peter and John. John 20, verses 5 to 10. Now this is, uh, they came running to the tomb. John got there ahead of him. And then he stopped and he looked in, right? And he, and he stooping down, looking in, saw the linen cloths lying there. Yet he did not go in. John didn't go in first. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. And he saw the linen cloths lying there. And the handkerchief had been around his head, not lying with the cloths. But folded together in a place, but folded together in a place all by itself. All of you know what that means, right? Yes. He's coming back. Because when they folded their, their napkin at the table, it meant they were coming back to the table. That's why it was set aside. The handkerchief was folded, meaning, I'm coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. Hallelujah. He's coming back. Amen. Problem is, I don't see enough people on the world saved yet. Somebody asked me the last week, he says, well, how soon? I said, don't know, don't care. Please don't get wrapped up in Him coming back. Please don't even look to the heavens for Him coming back. Say, Lord, what would you have me to do every day so more people in heaven than in hell? That's the problem with church today. Too many people are now, oh, I need you to come back. You don't know how much trouble I got years ago for that. Lord, hurry, come on back. I want to see you up into heaven. I want to come on be in glory. The word came to me was, how could you be so selfish? I got corrected. I cried. He said, I saved you. I delivered you. And you want to come home? What about all the people that don't know me? What about all the people that don't know Jesus? Because the church is looking for His return instead of sharing Him the saving grace of that cross with every soul you come in contact with. I mean, I got corrected bad, folks. I cried for days. How could you be so selfish, my son? He still called me a son. I didn't lose that. <coughs> but he told me how selfish I was to, to want Him to come back now when He desires not one soul to be lost. Stop looking for Jesus to come back and start saying, use me as a vessel of your saving grace. Use me to touch the lost out here. He came to seek and to save those that are lost. If we stop judging the world, we start looking for the salvation of the world, God can do something with us in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Then the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also. He saw and believed. For as yet he did not know the scripture, he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away to their own homes. Oh. Actually, Peter and them went back to fishing, so he had to come to the river, to the lake and get them again. <laughs> Is it settled in your heart the tomb was empty? Is it settled in your heart that he rose again? 
Okay, we're going somewhere with this because he's setting you all up right about now. He seems to do that. Amen. You notice what they did though? The tomb was empty. They went back to the house. You'd have thought they'd have been dancing because he said, I must rise on the third day. But how quickly they forgot what he said. That's why the Holy Spirit will teach you all things which you need to know. And bring to your remembrance all things you've forgotten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you conveniently forget stuff, the Holy Spirit's going to come remind you what you forgot on purpose. Hallelujah. Oh! Yeah. Got one that one, didn't he? Oh, I'm only sharing the stuff with you I've been busted by God with, okay? I'm only sharing with you the mistakes I've made because I've been corrected a lot in 25 years. I don't know about the rest of you. Melissa got it all right, but the rest of us, you know. Thank you, Jesus. We got it all right. Just say You know I couldn't leave you out of old sermon. You know that. Oh, God. Is I haven't even started on bread yet. Colossians 2nd chapter. Amen. See now, if you believe the tomb was empty, the cross was empty, it's settled in your heart that he rose on the third day. Now we're going to get into a place, do you really believe what he accomplished there? Is it settled in your heart with Jesus? Not to just your salvation, not the forgiveness of your sins. That was that was the easy part. It's when he descended down, huh? that the real victory of your life comes. Colossians 2nd chapter, we're going to read verses just 11 to 15. See, if the Word of God is settled in your heart, then you believe it's infallible, it's all-powerful, it's everything you need in life, um, it gives you a victorious life, but do you, is it settled in your heart? You'll see in a minute. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism. Because you've been raised a new creation, folks. Your old nature's dead. Don't let it live. Don't give it permission to live. In which you were also raised with him through faith in the workings of God who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, He made you alive together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwritings of requirements that was against us, that was the law, which was contrary to us. He has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers. He made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Ephesians 12, 6, 12. For we do not wrestle flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. He always leads us in triumphs. Is it settled in your heart your enemy's already been defeated? Amen. Then why do you go the devil this, the devil that, the devil this, the devil that? That punks, he's history. Jesus disarmed him. He made a public spectacle of him. He ripped his arms off. Amen. He's not your enemy, you are. Hello? Mm. I didn't get any amens on that. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> it's written. It's settled. He's defeated. He has risen. He disarmed the devil. Remind him of it when he tries to bother you. Because he's going to try and harass you. He's going to try and throw his little darts, but it says no weapons formed against you will prosper. Hello? Remind him that he's defeated. Amen. You beat him up enough, you step on his head enough, and guess what? He'll go find somebody that doesn't know that they've been raised from death to life. That they walk as a new creation, as a priest and a king of the Most High God. You have dominion and power and authority to walk above everything. Nothing should ever bring you down. You've been set on high. In Jesus' name, amen. He has been defeated. Amen. The only enemy you got is yourself, and not having His Word settled in your heart. It is so powerful what God wants to do with us. But unless you know you are invincible. And we are. We're an invincible kingdom. 
You belong to a kingdom that cannot be shaken. It can never be brought down because it has risen. It's alive. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God is alive and so are you, amen. And when you know this today, you will never bow again to any circumstance in this life. Because you will have the power and authority. Hallelujah. God's, he's waiting for us, folks. He's waiting for us to walk in the power and the authority He freely gave us. You didn't earn it. You didn't earn it. My wife and I got blessed with a vacation. I didn't earn it. God said, here. God said, here. So there's no word about money. God says in Isaiah 58, come with no money. He's got it taken care of. Amen. I just keep getting stuff, aren't you? <laughs> just do we just met, but it's okay. God knew you before you got here. Amen. Amen. He'll provide a way. Amen. Principalities and powers have been disarmed and rendered powerless. The only way they get strength around you is if you speak it. Look at that. Yeah. If you run around feeding him, he's gonna get up. In Genesis, he was told to crawl on his belly and eat dirt. Mankind let him up, not God. Not God. Everybody thinks man lost communion after the sin. No, they didn't. He was trying to get Cain not to kill his brother. He was talking audibly with people. He's still talking. But now we have a God that lives within inside of us. Be still. Know that He is God. Let Him speak to your heart. But He's going to tell you some things you don't want to hear. That's why most Christians can't hear right from God. They didn't hear what they wanted to hear. When I was young, I was praying stuff. I said, I know God told me that. He let me go on for a while with it. And then he said, that was what you wanted. You heard what you prayed because it wasn't my will. So you thought it was my voice when it was you. <gasps> you learn to be quiet after that. <laughs> God says he knows your thoughts before you have them, your words before you speak them. Be careful of your thoughts and your words today, folks. Because he knows what you're going to think and what you're going to say before you do it. Like I said, we're going to do a whole teaching about a month long on Psalm 139 one of these days. Because it's so powerful. Now that you know your enemy's dis been disarmed, Luke 10. Everybody knows this verse. Verses 18 and 19. There's a warning in that whole section right there, 17 to 24, about not having pride the way the devil did. So be careful with the power and the authority you've been given. It's not to be used against people. It's used against darkness. Our weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the tearing down of strongholds. You're not tearing people down. You're speaking life into them. Like John said before, don't look at somebody that's stuck. Speak resurrection power of Christ into their lives and watch the captives get set free. If I got set free, there's hope for everybody walking the planet. Amen, amen. If I'm savable, there's hope for everybody on the planet. If I can be used to preach the gospel and to leave, I'm praying for billions and billions and billions of souls to get saved. If God can do that with me, what's your excuse? Thank you. Just saying. Amen. Now, this is Jesus speaking. Because they came back, they were so happy they could cast out demons in His name. They were so happy about that. Yeah, okay. His name's above every name. It'll be magnified above His name. Psalm 138. And He said to Melissa, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I used her name for a reason. You need to put your name in there. Go to Luke 10 and put your name there. What is it? And he said to put your name there. You've been given it. Hallelujah. You've been amen. given the same amen. power and authority I have in every other way. That's why I use Melissa's name. Put your name in that book of Luke. Because it's to all those who believe. It says, go and wait in Jerusalem until you're endued with power. What power? Power and authority to trample on servants and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Power. And by nothing shall by any means hurt you. Walk in the power and the authority that God's given you, but never to harm. Never to harm. Mm -hmm. But to bring in a hope and a future to people. We're here to help you. Amen. 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 We're never here to harm with this. You don't attack with this. 
What you do is you take this as a sledgehammer like it says in Jeremiah and you beat the devil up with it every day so he doesn't even raise his ugly little head because he's this big and he's got a big microphone. Shut his tongue up by speaking the word at it and then watch what happens because you have authority over him not the other way around in Jesus' name. Amen? Yes. We are the church. We are victorious and we will never be brought low if we walk in the power and the authority that he has freely given us. As his children. He didn't come so we could walk in defeat, but walk in victory over everything in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Early this morning, I'm in the office praying. I'm making notes on this. He says, they're fighting battles. That's already over. Mm. Too many Christians fight battles. He says, tell them. They're fighting an enemy that's already been defeated. So what's the fight? What's the battle? The battle belongs to who? The Lord, the Proverbs. They get their horses ready. They get their spears ready. And, and Solomon wrote, but the battle belongs to the Lord. What did David say to Goliath? You come to me with sword and spear. You mock my God. I come to you in the name of the Lord, of hosts, the King of Israel, the heavens and all the earth. And today I'm going to chop your head off. He went in the name of the Lord knowing he would have victory because God sent him. When God sends you, the only thing that stops you from fulfilling your destiny is not the devil, not people, but yourself. We have to look in the mirror and say, Lord, I've looked at everybody else's walk but my own. You are all individually a chosen vessel for God's glory. You're not here for anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. You have the same power and authority that I do and any other believer does. Don't look at big time pastors and ministries and anything else because that means nothing. Don't even look at me, please. I didn't save you and I didn't die for you. I didn't. He did. Yes, I've been medically dead a bunch of times, but God fixed that too. <laughs> the devil could have had me. He should have had me when I was unsaved, but he can't have me now. Because God is faithful, amen. amen. It settled in my heart that he's defeated that I have all power over him and I'm going to walk victoriously because he can't touch me. Because I don't belong to darkness, I belong to the light of Jesus Christ. And nothing can steal my salvation, nothing can hinder my walk. He can scream, he can yell, people can try and attack, they can do what they want. But I know one thing, I'm going to finish the race because God has said, I'll help you. I am your strength. I'm your Amen. fortress. I'm your high tower. I'm your healer. I'm your provider. I'm your vindicator. I'm your redemption. I'm your sanctification. I'm the one who loves you more than life itself. I'm the one that created you in my image and likeness to walk in my ways. And I will keep you all to myself. Oh, hallelujah. And that's for all of you. This isn't for one person. It's for the whole church. We got to stop seeing church as a building and see it as the body again with him as the head. Amen. The lion of Judah rules and reigns. Well, we, who said that the other night about the lion roaring? Who said that? You? Yeah. Well, guess what? I've seen that. I was a young Christian. I was taken out of my body into the spirit. And I stood there. I saw these rocks and then I saw the cross. And I'm standing there like this in the spirit going, okay. I knew something was coming. The cross turned into a lion. And when it roared, the heavens shook, the ground shook. It literally turned into a lion on its hind legs like this, and I'm in the spirit like this. <laughs> I couldn't talk much that day. Um, you see, even out of my body in the spirit, it still affected me, because when I came back into my natural man, I was so overcome by what I saw. When he roars, all the heavens, the trees bow down, the oceans cease moving. The river stopped. The birds stopped flying. Because when he roars, it says, all nature is obedient servants to him. The word of God is everything is obedient to the word, the living word. Yes. That's who you walk with. That's who's in you. And that's who loves you and died for you. Amen? Amen. 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 Oh, hallelujah. We're going to tell oh, I got something good. You got your Bibles. Turn to Job, 22nd chapter. This is so good. He gave me this pearl the other day. It was so good. Mm. Must be me. That's you. It's me? Yeah. Sorry. You're going to love this. 
We're just going to read 22 to 25, but some may go back and read 21 to 30 because they're talking about repentance, repentance, turning back to the Lord, and what happens. And in the verse before 25, it talks about throwing your gold on the ground as dust. Okay? What, remember what I said when we started? It's loving God above all else. He, what did I say? Job 22. 25 to 28. Now go back and read 21 to 30 sometime. You'll see what I'm talking about there. Um, well, the one guy was trying to correct Job, and Job had already repented before God, but that's a whole other story. What chapter? 22, 25 to 28. Yes, the Almighty will be your goal. The Almighty will be your gold, your precious silver. Oh. For then you will have your delight in the Almighty. That is, you delight in the Lord always. That's where you're going to rejoice. And lift up your face to God, and you will make your prayer to Him, and He will heal you. He will hear you, sorry. He'll heal you too. You will pay your vows. You will declare a thing, and it will be established for you. So the light will shine on your ways. Oh, hallelujah! You've been given power and authority to declare a thing. And God will establish it. You don't even do it. You don't do it. He does it. Because if you're decreeing and declaring things that aren't of God, first of all, you're never going to see them. Jesus will be back before you see them. Because you did it for you and not for Him. You were led by what you wanted and not what God put in your heart. There's a big difference. Everybody goes, I've been decreeing and declaring, bop, 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 and you sit there and you listen for a couple minutes and you go, it's not coming. No, I decreed and declared. It's not coming. It's not God's will. <laughs> um, I can decree and declare a lot of things, but if I'm not led by God's Holy Spirit, I'm praying something for myself and not for the glory of my soon coming King. You'll have fulfillment and richness in your life you can't even count nor measure if you pray God's will for your life and not your own. He has a much better plan than any of us can come up with. He really does. He really, he's really good at his job. Seeing that he wrote your book of your life out on Psalm 139 before there was a day even on the earth. He formed you. He knew what you were going to look like in your mother's womb before he made the universe. He knows you. He knows you better than you know yourself. Stop trying to figure God out and just love him. That thing about decreeing and declaring a thing, Ezekiel 12, 24 and 28. The word of the Lord will be spoken and performed and delayed no longer, declares the Lord of hosts. When you speak the word of God, we did a whole teaching here on the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second. God said, let there be light. When you speak, you should expect God's word to manifest. You've been given all power and authority. You've been given all power and authority to speak the word of God in truth by His Spirit. And you should expect the manifestation of it. When Jesus says, walks up to the casket, puts his hand on here, I say to you, young man, arise. Been dead for who knows how long. What happened, church? He says, greater works than these are those are going to do. What happened? When the lame man lamed his whole life, arise and walk. Take up your bed and walk. Immediately he was healed. The man born blind. Immediately he could see. You have the same power and authority, greater works than these you'll also do. What happened, church? What happened? Why are we not speaking the word of God with the authority we have and watching God heal and set every captive free? Amen. Why are we not? You know why? Because you doubt. It's not settled in your heart. If you believe He died, if you believe like when Peter went in there and saw the empty tomb, the empty tomb wasn't empty for himself. He knew that the tomb was going to be empty before he made the tomb. Because God built this universe, no one else. It didn't happen at a big bang. He designed it. He built it. Amen. Next time somebody tells you it happened at a big bang, hey, God bless you. You're going to meet the guy that made the big bang. Amen. <laughs> but, but have it settled in your heart today what you're endued with. Amen. It's so important. So many people that decree and declare a thing. Don't go over there. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3. But the Lord is faithful who will establish you you, not me, you. And he'll keep you from the evil one. Remember that word settle? Is the word settled? Is it established in your heart today? Or do you have anything else in there that don't belong? Is it settled in your heart today? The word of truth, the word of promise. 
Is it really settled in your heart? Is your faith truly in the Word of God and every one of His promises? Or is it still in yourself and in mankind? Please don't put your hope in man. Look around the world right now. It doesn't work well when we put hope in governments and people and militaries and powers and stuff like that. It doesn't work, folks. God laughs at the nations. He laughs at the power of man. He goes, you're so futile. Psalm 94, 11. The Lord knows the thoughts of man that they are futile. That ought to answer a lot for you right there. Amen? Amen. Been busted on that scripture. Mm -hmm. When you don't think, you know, if the word is settled in your heart, you're facing things in life. You're facing trials. Things are coming up. You don't know how you're going to get there, right? Philippians 4, 19. And my God shall supply all you need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So the next time you're questioning if your needs are going to be met, the word's not settled in your heart. Because if He doesn't honor that word, He can't honor anything in the book. God said He will. He will. He will forgive all your sins. He will heal all your diseases. He will restore all the years the swarming, crawling, chewing, consuming locusts that have taken from you. He will give you latter rain to be better than the former rain. He will. See, so if you come up against something, oh my God, I'm not going to make it at the end of the month, the Word of God is not settled in your heart yet. That means you believe in a circumstance and not in the God of promise. It's one or the other. You either have this word settled in your heart, and it's not because most people don't spend too much time in here. They pick it up, they come to church on Sunday, they go through some scriptures, they may hit a Bible study once in a while, and then it collects dust the rest of the week. It's not something you can put aside any longer. You have to be prepared every single day because life is going to happen, life is going to come. But when everything in God's word is settled inside of you, there's nothing that could, the devil will be afraid of you. I've said it before. Darkness should tremble at your very presence. He's, oh God, here comes that one again. I'm out of here. He sees Taylor coming at him. She, oh man, she's going to lay hands on the sick today. I'm leaving. Because the Word is settled in her heart. She's anointed for it. She's ordained by God for it. So God is going to do it because He's faithful to complete that which He has begun in us. He can't lie. He's not a man. He's a spirit. Oh, hallelujah. You got the same spirit in you that spoke light into existence, that created the oceans, the stars, the sun, and the moon, that separated the oceans from dry land. The same power that put him here of his love raised him from the tomb, disarmed Satan. That is in you today. Why don't you walk that way? What are you afraid of? Oh, I could die. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> See, death has no hold on you. It's lost its sting, the Bible says. Death shouldn't even be your thought process except the poor souls that are dying without Jesus today. Because the church is too busy going to a building instead of sharing Jesus. You've been endued with eternal life. It's time to start sharing it. Is it settled in your heart? 1 Peter 2, 24. By His stripes ye were healed. Doesn't say you're going to be. It doesn't say you're going to be. It says, ye were healed. Ye were. Not going to be. It's past tense. Like John said when he's up here when we were worshiping. What you got to do is believe it. Is the word settled in your heart that you were already healed? Were you? You all know my testimony. I had no liver left. I had no kidneys left. I had no heart organ left. My lungs were destroyed. And now I wanted to live. <laughs> I got a new liver. I got new kidneys. I got new lungs. I got a new heart. Because Jesus put his in there. Amen? Amen? That's how you walk in the power of his love. See, I know that scripture is true. I know when God says he's going to restore all the years to you, I know it's true because I've lived it. I've lived it. I've watched him bless me because I didn't do anything to earn it. I've watched him take care of me for the last 25 years of ministry that only God could do it. There was no way I could get out of the circumstances I've been in even since we've been married. But God alone took care of it. But God can do all things. Through Christ you're more than a conqueror. Through Christ you can do all things. Leave Christ out of it you will surely, as God is my witness, you'll fall flat on your face and make a mess. And any of you that tried life without Jesus, you know what I'm talking about. Amen? Amen. 
Do you believe the word is settled in your heart? 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all the promises of God in Him are yes and amen, but it's to the glory of God through us. He loves to keep His promises. You know why? He shows off on you. God likes to show off on His kids. Why do you think He says He takes pleasure in the prosperity of His children? Why do you think one of the things that Jesus did for you on the cross, He broke the curse of the law so you could have the blessings of Abraham? That's why you need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem and His children in Israel every day. Because the world has done this. I told you, don't look at America because it's going to be a great revival here. That's one thing. God's going to turn this country upside down. Because that hasn't happened yet and it's coming. Too many people beside myself have seen it coming. They've prophesied it's coming and it's coming. God is on the move. And I'll tell you what, when God's on the move, there's what God is saying in Isaiah, He says, what I have begun, nothing can reverse it. There's a tidal wave, a tsunami of the Holy Ghost is going to come through this valley. And you better be ready. You better have your swimming trunks on because it's going to get wet. Amen? <laughs> We're going to close with Mark 21 or I'll be talking about this stuff till midnight. Oh no, I had to cut myself off last night. I said, we're going to be here all day tomorrow. You have your Bibles, turn to Mark, first chapter. Mm -mm -mm. It is settled. Settled in your heart. Let God's Word settle in your heart and take up root in there. It talks about in Jeremiah the tree that's planted by the river. The rivers are over there. It talks about the roots that go out. Because those roots are thirsting for nourishment. You're planted in the house of the Lord. You drink of the living water every day. And your tree will always prosper. Your tree will always be strong. Your tree will always be fresh and flourishing. Your leaves will never wither when you dwell in the river of the Lord God Almighty. Amen? Amen. We're just going to read that one. I don't even forget what verse are we? It's in Mark 1. It's in 21 to 28. I don't know which verse it is. Then they were all amazed. He just cast out the unclean demon. It says, Then they were all amazed, so that they all questioned among them, said, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For what authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. You have God's tongue in your mouth. Love chapter. Um, but it's so important that you realize the power that you have. I'm in trouble. You, you, you have the same power that Jesus has. Like I said, when you speak to things, you should expect it to change. God's waiting for you to decree a thing. When things come against you, oh my God, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Don't feed the devil. Say, I thank you, Lord, that you're going to supply all of my needs. I thank you, I'll never be begging bread. I'll never be put to shame. I'll never be forsaken. I thank you that all who see me will know I'm the posterity the Lord has blessed. That's everything generational that was stolen from you, God's even going to restore. Even though you didn't ask for it. But the Word says it. See, I know He's going to because it's written. What is written is what is. What did He tell the devil? It's written. Then He had enough of His nonsense and says, Get behind me. See, Peter spoke against the Word. He even told Peter. He didn't say, Peter, he said, Get behind me, Satan. Jesus is calling. Amen. Um, he's trying to cut me off. <laughs> My favorite subject, Jesus. But do you see what I'm saying? You've been given the authority to speak to the unclean demons, the addiction demons, the poverty demons, because that's all under the curse of the law. He became a curse, so we don't live under it anymore. Amen. The church is supposed to prosper and be blessed. We're blessed and highly favored by God. All we got to do is receive it. Isaiah 58 says, come before him with no money. He's going to take care of it. He doesn't need your money. He needs your heart. Stop thinking God needs your money. I checked this morning. He's not broke. <laughs> Amazing how many people think they have so much. But without Christ, they are spiritually bankrupt, poor, and broken. Hallelujah. You could give somebody a billion dollars. What good is it if they don't have Jesus Christ? Because their goal, like it says in, in Job, the Almighty is my goal. The Almighty is my silver. The Almighty is my reason for living and moving and having my being. The Almighty is the reason I get out of bed every day. Not even for all of you, not even for my wife do I get out of bed every day. I get out of bed because He gave me life. He gave me life. Eternal life. 
And it's my job to share that with people. And it's your job to share it with people. You already got all you're going to get. All the heavenly blessings are already yours. It says you've received all your heavenly blessings. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. You're already blessed, healed, whole, and restored. But unless you decree it every day, it's not going to come. God's waiting for you to command your blessings to come forth. It says, come, let us reason together. Come before God as a priest and a king in the kingdom of God and say, Lord, the wealth of the wicked was stored up for the righteous. It belongs in the kingdom. It don't belong in darkness. The devil owns nothing. He doesn't own anything. The only thing he's got is an eternal fire. And he's simmering. So it's, like, it's like a pot. I just saw a pot right now of water. And it's over the hot fire right now. And God's got him simmering. Let me tell you something. You don't have to put up with darkness. It has no right in your life. None, zero, zip, nada, zilch. Speak to it. Decree and declare every day that you are free from the powers of darkness. God is going to protect you from all evil. He's going to cleanse you, purify you every morning you get out of bed. He's going to protect you from the evil one. He's going to supply all your needs. It says, I'm going to satisfy you with a long life. Decree it every day the word over you. You are all prophets of the Most High God, especially in this house. It's a prophetic ministry. It's a five-fold ministry. You are all gifted and ordained and chosen by God to walk in His glorious presence every day. Amen. 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 Get excited about what Jesus has done for you. Hallelujah. Have to excuse me. I'm getting a little... He's been changing me a little bit. I'm finally getting past that shyness I got. <laughs> I got to come out of my shell. <laughs> You know what it is? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Because what I'm preaching, I finally believe in myself. You hear yourself say I hear myself say Every morning I've been speaking it out loud. I get up before her, I go in that office, and I just start speaking the Word of God over my wife and I, over this ministry, over all your families, over this valley, over this country. Because I'm not going to be satisfied until I see the glory from one end of the room to the other. And then when that's done, I'm going to take it to the Atlantic, and to the North Pole, and to the South Pole. Because the glory is already in you. You already have glory living in you. He's already glorified. He's no longer in the flesh. He is a glorified spiritual king of kings and lord of lords. He's coming for a purified church. And it's time the church wake up and take its authority on this earth and make darkness bow everywhere you go. Amen. They were trembling before him. Darkness should tremble at your presence. Your light should be so bright. Your children are the most high God today. You gotta see yourself the way God does. Look in the mirror and see God's workmanship. Stop looking that your hair is out of place. Amen. Luckily, I don't have that problem. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, it's coming. It's growing. I'm, it's growing. Forty years I didn't have hair. It's all of a sudden it's growing. Don't ask me. I don't know. But with God, all things are possible. God said He's gonna restore all the years that were taken from me. He gave me all new organs. It didn't come from a doctor. It didn't come from a counselor. My peace didn't come from anywhere. My healing didn't come from anywhere. My provision doesn't come from anywhere. My sole source of existence is Jesus Christ and every one of His promises. It's settled in my heart. It should be settled in yours today. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.
God understands. But what He doesn't understand, He's trying to heal you right now. Physical healings are easy. It's the emotional pain that only the love of Jesus Christ can heal in you this day. He's pleading with you. Do not be stubborn this day. Humbly bow before Him. And let the power of His love, like we sang today, more love, more power. Let it into you today. Oh, come Jesus. to let go. Mm. Oh, Jesus. The longer you hang on to what you think you justified and hanging on to what you're not, the longer it's going to hurt you, not others.